Hi, I'm Abba Shapiro, and today we're going to look at getting pro results with the raw develop filter. Now, the great thing about the raw develop filter is you can fix lens abnormalities. We're going to start with this image, and this and it's a little bit crooked. So we're going to step in to the lens correction panel as well as the transform panel to go from this to this. I'm going to go ahead and reset this filter. If you want to reset your filter, just hit this counterclockwise arrow. It will reset everything back to the defaults, and now we can start fixing this image. Let's go ahead and take off the split screen and start working with our lens correction and learning what you can do in this panel. So the first slider is called distortion. So if you have pin cushioning in your image and perhaps your image looks like this, you can go ahead and you can fix that distortion. Or in this case, I have barrel distortion. And this is an example of extreme barrel distortion. If you noticed, it kind of looks like it's pasted on top of a globe and the buildings are bending. So I'm gonna go ahead and just play with this slider until I can get these buildings to look kind of straight. And you can go ahead and play with this. And remember, you can always readjust it as you work on your images. So I'm gonna slide this here. I'm at about 63, maybe that's a little bit too much. So this fixes the barrel distortion. If I move my cursor off the slider, you can see that the overlay disappears. And so I kind of like where this is going. And let's take a look at the before, and this is always worthwhile. So it's a minor fix, but you can see it does make a difference. Another thing you can fix in this panel is something called chromatic aberrations. Now what this is, is if you zoomed in, I'm gonna zoom into this image, there's a little bit of chromatic aberration. I'm gonna zoom in to say 300%. And you'll notice in this image, there's a little bit of a red line to the right of all my verticals. That's chromatic aberration. It happens sometimes when you're using a very wide angle lens and the edges of the lens aren't as optically sharp. Or sometimes if you have really bright light coming in, uh, it distorts on the edges. So if you have really bright areas that are blown out and then darker shadow areas, again, you can get chromatic aberrations. So how do you fix this? Well, two sliders. And the best way to fix this is to play with your sliders. I'm gonna to go to the extremes here so you can see what bad aberration looks like. So if I move this all the way to the left, let it process. Notice now you see a really sharp green line to the right of the building and a sharp red line to the left. This could be what the image might look like out of the camera if you have distortion at the edges of your lens or sometimes even if things are really blown out. So to fix this, I would simply move this over until it lines up. And we're pretty zoomed in, so there it is, pretty lined up. And I did move it over, it's at about 35. And again, don't go with the numbers, go with your eyeballs. And the blue and yellow, exactly the same thing. And now we can look at the D vignette slider. I wanna bring this back to full screen. I'm gonna actually use a keyboard shortcut. Command zero will now let me see my entire image in the window. Now, what DVignette does is it corrects again for distortion in your lens. A lot of times as you go to the outer edges of a lens, it doesn't pick up as much light. So a lot of times you'll get vignetting, you'll get a darker circle around the edges. This could also happen if you have a sunshade on it and some of the light is not getting into the edges of your frame. So what DVignette does is it literally lightens up the edges. Now this is different than the vignette filter that you would use at the end of your photo processing. Here your goal is to get a nice clean image without any of those shadows on the outer rings. Now the transform panel allows you to adjust perspective and readjust the framing of the image. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna fix the perspective. And if you notice the buildings here kind of lean in a little bit, and that's because I was pretty low to the ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work with the vertical slider, and I'm gonna play with that. And let's go ahead, you notice if I move it to the left, the image goes up and the buildings look straighter. If I move it to the right, I actually am making the situation worse. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it to the left and just tweak it till those buildings look pretty straight. Now that's a really good start. Now if I move my cursor off the slider, you'll notice that I've actually lost or I've compressed the bottom part of my image. So I'm gonna to have to fix that. But my buildings, the center of the image, look great. The other issue that I have 
is I know this image is a little bit crooked. So I'm gonna use the rotate slider. And the nice thing is I can use this grid to adjust it. And it's very slightly off, but it would drive me crazy if I didn't have it perfectly straight. So that's pretty good, again, eyeballing it. If you want to, go ahead and zoom in. I'm gonna hit Command-1 or Control-1 and I can zoom in and I can see if this is really straight and this way I can work with the nuance of this. And I can click here right on the filter and if I wanted to, I can use this as a virtual slider and just make sure that it's perfectly sort of straight. And now Command or Control zero, and I'm back to my original image. So this is pretty good. It's the way I like it. And just to show you a little bit of what the other sliders do, uh, horizontal, it changes the perspective left and right. So if I had shot this image and it was skewed and I needed to not only fix the perspective of it vertically, I can also use the horizontal slider to fix any perspective I might have from shooting this at an angle. Now this was pretty straight on, so I'm gonna go ahead and reset that back to its default. And as you can see, the last four that you use would be aspect ratio. And this is something that I rarely use. It changes the aspect ratio or if there's a vertical or horizontal distortion. Very rarely is that the case. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset that by double clicking on it. And the other ones I can use, I can use scale. So in this case, maybe I wanted to be able to get rid of this area under here. So I'll go ahead and blow the image up. So I'm scaling this up so I don't see any of that. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and I can adjust the offset. I think there's too much information in the foreground. So the X and Y offset does exactly as you would think. X moves things left and right. Let's reset that. And the Y moves things up and down. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring this down a little bit because I want that rule of thirds and I want the bottom of my image to really sit where those people are in the bottom third of the frame. I really kind of like the way this is starting to look. Now, once I've done this, I can start really processing my image. But again, I always like to go back and remind myself and remind you what it looked like before and what it looks like after. So as you can see, the raw develop filter is extremely powerful in fixing your images and getting them to a point where you can really start working with them creatively. Now, what I like to do in my workflow is once I've done this, I usually create a second adjustment layer. And depending on the way you like to work, sometimes I do this, uh, I'll add the Accent AI filter and I'll see how that looks on my image. So let's go ahead, add filter, Accent AI, and I'll look at a little bit of a boost here and it makes it pop a little bit. Bring it up just a little bit more. So this is a really nice way to work. Now comes the important part, creating that new layer. Because if I went and I applied a preset at this point, it would delete the two filters that I've applied and all my work would have gone downhill. So what I like to do, once I get the image the way I like it, I go ahead and I add another layer. And I'm going to go ahead and do this in the layers part of this tab. I'll click on that and I'll say add new adjustment layer. And once I've done this, I can start modifying this image and applying any preset I want. Let me quickly go over and apply a preset. I have them turned off now. I'm going to go ahead and activate them. And let's pick one of the default categories. We're going to simply go out here to maybe travel. And I really want it to give me that maybe happy memories look. So I'll go ahead and I'll apply this and it really pops. But the beautiful thing about this is if I didn't like this, I can keep changing it and I will never accidentally overwrite the work I've done in the raw develop filter. Now to complement this video, we created some raw develop presets for you to play with. And they're presets such as correcting an image that's overexposed or underexposed, or perhaps it's a person silhouetted against a bright background such as the beach. And go ahead and play with that. But what's more important, take a look at how we created those, what we did with the sliders. And what I'd love for you to do is go ahead, 
apply the raw develop filter and play with the sliders and see exactly what it does to your image and really take control of this filter.